When you look at this airplane, you think it belongs in Star Wars. But this plane is real and it's not new. SR-71 Blackbird This was born in 1964. After World War II, when the Allies defeated the Nazis and the Japanese, the next day there was a new enemy in front of them. The Soviet Union and the Cold War just started. In the 1950s, to spy on the Soviets, the US used the Lockheed U-2. Even though this airplane didn't have a high speed, but it could fly in higher altitude. And that was in a way where it couldn't be seen or any missiles could catch it. When the Soviets were taking nuclear weapons to Cuba, it was the U-2s that found out. In those altitudes, they could easily spy on the Russians. But the Soviets didn't sit back. They created a missile called the SA-2 that could catch this thing. In the year 1960, one of these missiles actually shot down a U-2 and the American pilot was caught by the Russians. Before the Russians shot this thing down, the US knew it had to be replaced. And that's why, since the year 1957, they were working on a new design for an aircraft. They were designing a plane that couldn't be seen and no missile could catch. Back in the day, Lockheed Martin wasn't grouped up with Martin Marietta and that's why it was only considered Lockheed. Lockheed first designed an airplane called the Lockheed A-12. In the year 1962, the American Air Force tested this aircraft in Area 51. After the test passed, Lockheed built 15 of these bad boys. This plane was used in the Korean War, Vietnam War, and it was also used to spy on the Soviets. But it was a plane that caused a lot of accidents because in a short time, six of these 15 aircrafts were crashed. When information came to Lockheed, that these things are crashing left and right, they decided to build something better. They were successful because in two years, they got rid of the A-12 and retired it, and SR-71 Blackbird was born. In our video about titanium, we said this airplane used a lot of titanium. Let's see how much was used. 92% of this airplane is made from titanium. This is the fastest aircraft in the world. Its speed catches to Mach 3.3, and that's more than 3,600 kilometers an hour. This is in a way where the F-22, which is the best fighter jet in history, goes about 2,400 kilometers an hour. This wasn't the maximum speed the SR-71 could go. It could go way higher. But Lockheed suggested you cannot go faster than that because it gets dangerous. In 1986, the SR-71 was sent to spy. During this operation, a missile was shot towards the SR-71. But since the pilot didn't want to get hit, let's say he put the pedal to the metal and the aircraft reached Mach 3.5, and that's more than 4,300 kilometers an hour. There's a lot of airplanes that could go Mach 3, but they can't do that for a very long time. If they continue to go that speed, it could get dangerous and destroy the frame. But the SR-71 could go Mach 3 for 90 minutes straight. 
As you know, the flight between New York and London is about 6 hours, but this aircraft could go that distance in 1 hour and 54 minutes. And that meant it could outrun pretty much every missile in that era, and nobody's gonna catch it. You could say this is a missile, but it has two wings. Some people might say that the X-15 is the fastest airplane. X-15 is faster than the SR-71, but the X-15 is not considered an airplane. It is a rocket aircraft, and it cannot take off by itself like an airplane. The X-15 has its own story and deserves its own video. But it wasn't just the high speed. The advanced radar system and jammers would make this thing invisible. But one of the things that held it back was the heat of the exhaust, and it was so hot that it could be seen in the radars. But that didn't matter to the SR-71, because this machine still has another unbroken record, and that means the SR-71 could go 85,000 feet in the air. Even though this aircraft was ready in 1964, but it took four years of testing, then it entered service. Because you could say in the four years, they were torture testing it. SR-71 was mostly used as a spy plane. It started its job in the Vietnam War, and it continued all the way to the end of the Cold War. It's good to know that in the Vietnam War, 800 missiles were shot at the SR-71, but not a single one was hit. Obviously, this aircraft was never sold to any country, and only 32 were made, and they worked for over 30 years. In its 30-year lifespan, nobody could shoot this thing down, but unfortunately, it brought itself down, and 11 of these SR-71s were crashed. Even though it was a very useful aircraft, but it was expensive to operate. When one of these flew, it meant it's costing $100,000 an hour. You might not believe it, but after each flight, a lot of parts had to be swapped to fly again. Another cool thing about this aircraft is that it used so much fuel to take off that it needed a refuel when it got into the air, and that was to continue the mission. All this is a part of the cost. When we get to the 90s, this extremely advanced aircraft had to get retired because military drones that were a lot cheaper and more advanced were starting to embarrass it. NASA also used two of these aircrafts, and that was mostly for test pilots. As you know, a lot of astronauts in NASA used to be test pilots before they came into the astronaut department, and an astronaut should be able to handle an aircraft like this. NASA retired their two aircrafts one year after the Air Force. A lot of people thought after the SR-71, the SR-72, and the SR-73 were gonna be made, but they closed the door and they said nothing else is coming. The thing that's coming are drones. You could say drones are eliminating all the other aircrafts because they're useful in every other way. After this, the most powerful air forces had to have a good drone technology. The operations that the SR-71 performed were all at war, and war is not a good thing. But the engineering and building this aircraft is extremely interesting to talk about.
In the year 1960s, Lockheed got $34 million each for the SR-71. That's an absurd number. That equals $340 million in today's money. And that's in a way where the Phantom F-4, which was the latest fighter aircraft in that era, only cost $2.4 million. So the SR-71 is more than 15 times the cost of the F-4. Right now, there's 20 SR-71. You might think they sent it to the graveyard in Tucson, Arizona, which we made a video about. But this aircraft is a little too special to go to a graveyard. All the SR-71s that survived, plus the A-12s, are found in museums across America, and anybody can go and see them.